Hey everyone, it's Max and welcome back to our Python tutorial. So again, let's continue off just, just where we left last time. So if we remember where we left last time, then we can see here if we run our module again, we've created this rectangle here on the screen, this blue little rectangle. Um, and we've actually created it at a position of 0x, 50y, and the width and height are 30. And we also saw that if we created it at 0, 0 is a little bit hidden, um, so that's why I moved it down just a little bit by changing the y-coordinate. One thing that you also read from here is that the 0, 0 location is in the top left corner, and then if we create increase x and y, we're pretty much going across the screen like that. So that's how we change the x and y-coordinates to. So that's what we did in the end there, just increasing y so that it's not hidden under this bar, so that's still part of the screen, um, and we just moved it down just a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna look at how we can get our rectangle to start moving. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna redefine our X and our Y coordinates. So right now we'll just put these here, um, and we'll have X be equal to 50 and Y be equal to zero. I'm um, actually we're gonna move these out and have them be before our loop because these are our starting coordinates. So that's what we want to start as. And all we're going to do is we're just going to replace our, oh, we actually want x to be 0, sorry, and y to be 50. So we're going to replace our x coordinate here with the x variable that we've created up here. So that's going to be our x position. And 50 is going to be replaced by our y condition. So if we run this and save, of course, then we see there's actually no difference right now, just because 0 and 50 have been replaced by x and y, which still contain the values of 0 and 50. So there's no real difference. The only difference is that we now have these initial values stored, and if we want to move it, then we can continuously update these. So that's why we've created them in the form of a variable, rather than just hard coding them in here, so yeah, that we can just continuously update them. And that's also, you know, one of the uses of variables is that we can continuously refer to their previous state. All right, good, cool. So now that we've done this little adjustment, created this variable here so that we can see this rectangle here now in the same format, but using X and Y instead, let's learn how we can see or how we can start to move our rectangle. So what we're going to do in Pygame is, or in, in our um, coding environment here, is we're going to go into Pygame, and we're going to want to check if a certain key is pressed. So to do that, we're going to go into key. And what we're going to do here, so again, we're going into Pygame. We're now going into the key object, and we're going to call this method that's actually already being suggested to us here, called get pressed like this and what this does for us is it just returns to us all of the pressed um, all of the pressed keys um, in a kind of form of well actually it's a form of an, an array or a list but we'll see more on that in a second so that we can really understand this um, but yeah so what we're doing right now is we're just getting all of the pressed keys in the form of a long list all right um, and we need to save that in somewhere, so we can sit, call that maybe press keys is equal to the following. So the press keys are the keys that are returned to us from this get pressed method. So what exactly is being returned to us? So what's being returned to us is a variable, or actually, sorry, it's a list, um, or also called an array. So I'll show you an example of an array just on a quick side note here. We can create an array like this um, using open and close square brackets. And arrays, just like tuples, which we've created um, for the color right here, can also hold several um, elements. And each element is separated by a comma. So for example, our first element can be zero, the number is zero. We can have 1.2, that's our second element, which we separate here by comma. Then we can say maybe 4.5 or something like that. We can also put in here the word or the string hello. 
And so that's what an array is for us. Um, and so we can see it's, it's pretty much a collection. Well, it's actually a um, way of storing data. Uh, so it's a form of a collection where grouping relevant data, so similar data, um, that we can access. And it's, and it's held in this list. All right. So what we're going to do is we'll print out our array here. Just as kind of like a short little side example, we're going to do this um, just to understand what we really get when we have this get key pressed. So that we're that to under really understand what we're doing and why it is that we're doing that, we have to understand these arrays or these lists. So we'll quickly cover that now. All right. So if we run our module and we click OK, then well we have you know the Pi game being loaded here and stuff. What we're really interested in is the output in the console that we have right here. And so we see again this list, which we see um, is a list because it has open and close square brackets at the front and the end, and each element is separated by a comma. So that's the whole array or the whole list that we're printing out. We can access individual elements by going by having this array variable here that stores our, our list or our array. And by putting open and close square brackets behind, and by putting now the index of um, the variable or the of the element that we want to access. So let me explain to you the indexes too, how they work. So the index works as follows: um, for a list that has several elements, the first index is or the first element has the index zero. The second element has the index one, the third element has the index two, and the fourth element has the index three, and so on. If we were to have a fifth element, it would have the index four, and so on. So the only difference is uh, in programming, we start counting at zero. So rather than the first element having the index one, the first element actually has the index zero. So that's how indexes work like. All right, let me just shift this back here just a little bit. All right, um, good. So yeah, so that's in general how indexes look like or how they work. So to get out a certain element, we have to access it in the list through calling its index. So for example, if we want to access the first element, which is the element with index zero, we put in the square brackets behind our variable name, this index, and notice here, here we're assigning a list to it. And here we also have the square brackets, but since we don't have this assignment here, since it's right behind our variable name that contains the list, that means we want to access that element. So if we run that, now we see, we go over here, we get the output zero, which is our first element. If we put in the index one, then we get and save and run. Then we get here, the output 1.2, which is our second element. If we look at the index 2, then we get the output 4.5, which is our third element. And if we look at the index 3, and save and run this, then we get the fourth element, which has index 3, since in programming we start counting at 0, which is hello. So we can go up. We can also go backwards and to access, for example, the last element, we can put in here, instead of three, we can put in here the value negative one. So we're counting backwards. So this is zero, this is negative one. So here we will also get hello. If we go the second last element, negative two, we get 4.5, like this. So. That's the basics of lists in Python. Um, and we'll be using this to access the elements that we get returned from here. So that's kind of important for here. So we'll comment this out just so that we can reference to it later. And, and that's also what we're getting back from here. And our lists or arrays are really, really great because they allow us in one variable to store a bunch of information uh, or to group a bunch of information and store it in the same variable that's related. And for a list that has, you know, maybe a length of 100, we don't have to create 100 different variables. We can just create one variable that contains a list with 100 elements. 